Hi everyone, a warm welcome. Uh, uh, really nice to have all of you all join in on this uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, so we'll get started. I think Ravish also will be joining us uh, today from Google. Uh, we have Ajit from uh, Sundaram Mutual, who's our Chief Marketing Officer, and uh, Ravish from Google. And the main agenda, hi, uh, Ajit, welcome. Uh, thank you for taking out the time. Uh, the main agenda. My pleasure, from, Sunil. Thank you. Main agenda for today is to discuss, uh, you know, how uh, brands are looking to navigate times. Some of the best practices, uh, which uh, Ajit and some of the other uh, folks in the webinar have seen in terms of best practices, and uh, you know how should we all look to come back out of it stronger, given that it's uh, massively impacted all our businesses uh, as of today. Hi, I'm Ajit. I request everyone to be on mute. I think we will open. <coughs> Absolutely. Yes, me. Just one second. Let me share my screen uh, to get us. Is my screen visible? Or? Oh, not yet. Yeah, it's loading. Yeah, yeah, it's visible now. Yes. Right. So I think uh, you know, uh, Vikas, maybe you can call the Vish as well. Yes, I'll just check with him. Yeah. I think uh, you know, uh, getting started on this uh, webinar in terms of navigating uncertain times. You know, I think the first step, which uh, you know, all of us, given that we've become anxious sitting at home, is you know, we need uh, reassurance, and wanted to see how our brands, uh, you know, connecting with the consumers and uh, these time, uh, testing times, also looking at uh, scenario planning. So the first question, uh, you know, which I had for Ajit uh, to start this webinar was, uh, you know, how are you looking at the COVID situation in terms of scenarios? As your organization uh, looking at uh, continuing uh, communication as usual, or you'll have taken significant steps in you know changing your communication style for different uh, stakeholders. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, it's, it's good to have this question. You know, that you know, after ten days in April, these are we having this question towards the latter end of March, uh, Sunil, because I think uh, my answer might have been a bit different. Uh, end of March and where we are today. Uh, I think there are uh, two, three ways of approaching this, right? The way we have gone about looking at it is, uh, is basically having uh, 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 two to three scenarios and, uh, and, and strategies within those scenarios. <clears throat> but I think the core of all of this, right? I think the first thing is uh, the word that you have anxious. I think the first thing that we need to do is to not panic. Right. Uh, uh, these are these are times that it's not just that uh, it's not that we as an organization haven't seen or the business haven't seen. Uh, I think most of the entire world they have not has really been faced with a situation like this. So this is largely unprecedented in that sense. Uh, so we are in a way uh, treading unknown waters. Uh, uh, so I don't know if there is a right or a wrong approach for uh, each brand or company. So it really needs you need to figure out what works best for you. So I think for starters, right, uh, just to give uh, the audience uh, context to our business, uh, we are fortunately one of the few businesses uh, in the world that isn't really locked down. Uh, uh, in, in the sense, uh, unlike some of the services sectors or manufacturing sectors, uh, the stock market is still functioning. Uh, people continue to invest, or people continue to redeem, people continue their SIPs. So I think, uh, so you know, I just saw the uh, industry data and uh, guess what? The flows in March have actually been better than the flows in February. Uh, SIP flows in, in March have actually been better than SIP flows in February. So, you know, so yeah, so one way to attribute that is to, is to say that people are actually mature, people are trying to say, 
you know, stock markets are correcting is actually a good time to buy, which is what 10 years ago we were saying, right? When the market is correcting, you've got to invest more. When the market is actually peaking out, you tend to just, just uh, stay quiet. So I think people are becoming mature to that extent. So that's one part of it. But I think from a, from a company brand point of view, what do we do need, need to do differently, right? So I think the key element for us is to see if our infrastructure first is geared to to uh, to uh, uh, to service uh, the requirements of the of, of customers and distributors in today's environment. So I think digital for us is one very very important element. Uh, we've always been very focused on on building our digital infrastructure uh, for the last three to four years, uh, uh, and uh, I personally have been uh, involved in that over the last couple of years. And uh, you know, social beat uh, has also been. Uh, extremely uh, uh, relevant in that context in helping us build out our digital footprint across uh, the, the entire customer funnel itself. Uh, so I think the digital footprint to us is very important. Um, uh, a lot, uh, more than 90% of our business today comes from distributors. So digital today is not really B2C, it's also B2B, B2B, B2C, right? Um, so I think that's the way we look at it. So ensuring that our digital infrastructure is up and running, uh, is something that uh, you know was was is is is, is you know, of paramount importance. So I think that's the first part. I think the second part is in terms of engagement itself, right? Uh, like I said, because we are we are a very very heavily distributor driven business, uh, and a lot of the distributor engagement is is largely physical, right? We have a very large sales team. The sales team typically wants to go meet distributors on a day to day basis, engage in conversations with them understand what their consumers want. And then, you know, that's how the, uh, the journey goes. Uh, but I think in today's world, uh, engagement, physical engagement clearly is not going to happen. So how, does the, how, how do you still continue to be top of the mind as far as distributors are concerned? How do you stay relevant as far as distributors are concerned? So that is the consumer, as far as distributor engagement, communication, content comes into relevance. And again, that is, a, that is, that is something that we have, we have deeply invested in over the last uh, year or so. We built out a very strong video engagement channels. We built out very strong audio engagement channels in the way of a podcast. We've also yeah. put together a very strong um, uh, text-based uh, communication uh, uh, platform with, with, with our own blog that we have. Uh, there's a lot of work we're doing on creative. So I think the distributed engagement continues to happen through that route. Uh, uh, in fact, as we speak today, we're we are rolling out a, a podcast update from our uh, chief investment officer. Uh, right. on, on where, he, where we as an organization see the market. So I think, uh, you know, continuous engagement it, it to stay relevant and ensure that you're top of the mind is very important. I think the most important element, right, like uh, when I started off as far as to not panic, is to ensure that we, we try to communicate to both distributors and consumers that it is largely business as usual, right? So the, the, the COVID impact for us is twofold. One is economy and markets. So obviously the market has generated 30, 35% over the last one month. Right. So that impact is clearly that the consumers have lost money. Right. Oh. But clearly our communication as an industry, as Sundra Mutual has is working somewhere because consumers are continuing to invest money. Right. right. They're not, they're not, they're not, you know, backing off or they're not, you know, uh, stopping their investments. They continue to invest more money. So clearly. Have you seen that uh, channel is, change, Ajit? Uh, in terms of the channel change, have you seen that move, move online compared to like IFA? So is that. Uh, so that's. Uh, so that's that inevitable, Sunil. Uh, you know, uh, so to me, the way I would look at the scenario six months or a year later, year down the line is very much like digital, right? So do you, you have a pre-COVID environment and a post-COVID environment. So this could be the disruption that the digital world has has always wanted in a very ironical manner. But then, uh, uh, but unfortunately, uh, you know, it's not the best way to do it. But I think this is going to ensure that people move faster to digital uh, platforms. So today, yeah, you know, a lot of our transactions are digital. We opened a very digital oriented model as well. Uh, uh, SEBI regulator wanted us to do it. The customer could fill out a form physically and scan it and then send it to an email address uh, when, we, when we process it, which is largely digital. But that's not something which is taken out dramatically. You know, we're not seeing, we're seeing, we're seeing transactions there, but that's not a dominant channel. A dominant channel is actually the digital channel, which is, B2B digital as well. So what we call the distributor initiated transaction where, an, where a broker or a distributor initiates a transaction digitally on behalf of the customer and gets the customer to authorize the payment, right? So the conversation between the distributor and the customer has also moved digital today, right? Um, so there are lots of FaceTime conversations going on, a lot of Zoom conversations going on. So there's uh, all of, you know, the entire engagement model, whether it is 
my brand to a customer or my brand to a distributor or a distributor to a customer or a distributor to me has become completely digital today right and i i don't believe that this is going to change dramatically you know once covid goes away in a post covid environment also people will understand that there are advantages of being in the digital space right i'm not saying this will be binary it's not going to be 0 to 100 but for example if 30% of our business today is digital it will probably it will perhaps kind of plateau out about 50 to 60% as we move two years down the line so there could be a 2 to 3x jump in digital itself because of this scenario understood no fabulous i think we have put uh, you know some of the work which is live as well in terms of what you've been doing for distributors uh, communication as well as consumers communication yeah. maybe you can uh, throw some light uh, uh, yeah you know, so i think one of the yeah yeah so i i can walk through this i think one of the like i said right the first thing is uh, the largest share of our business comes from distributors right so i think the first uh, element of our communication has been focused on can we communicate to distributors not to panic we are not panicking we don't want you to panic right so like i said this this could be very different from if you go talk to a restaurant owner it could be very very different right uh, because this business is 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 in the shambles in complete shambles today so you know you go talk to an airline you know having effectively for many companies you go talk to make my trip it could be very different but for me unfortunately you know fortunately the way i look at it our business is still functioning right uh, so from that point of view i think the message that we wanted to get across to the distribution community was to say hey listen thank you for being there right and 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 we are there for you so i think that is the first communication that we wanted to send out to uh, to distributors uh understand that you know but you know, look at it from a distributor's point of view his, you know his entire revenue model is based on us right and yeah. I, i'm speaking for the industry and not for me right for on us right the more he sells mutual funds is where he makes more commission so that's pretty much his revenue stream right uh, that's his salary to that extent yeah. so i think the first thing as asset managers that we need to do is to is to stay relevant to him and tell him that the company we're not panic panicking we are we are we are we are there we are aggressive we are relevant and we want to be there with you right so i think that's the first thing so uh, so that's the kind of messaging that we wanted to put out and second thing i think is is in terms of uh, of of focusing on digital right um uh, just to dial back a bit i think we've gone through two three years of evangelizing digital right uh, uh, i don't you know if, if there is anyone in 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 this in this environment or in this world today who does who says Hello. i don't i didn't know you could buy a mutual fund product digitally or i didn't know you could transact a financial product digitally you probably are living in a different world right yeah. so i think the evangelizing of um, of digital has happened so our focus here was more to tell him that you know get your clients to transact digitally today you know you can be on digital right uh, and distributors are very very digital today so get your clients to transact digitally right that's our that's been our communication so obviously the stay home you know stay in their kind of communication which has been there has it worked uh, like you know what's the feedback from uh, ifa is are they more like assured after this communication we have seen it so obviously i mean i am not going to say that it's been it's been hunky dory and it's been seamless this is when you wake up and you start hearing issues this is when the it teams and your product teams are uh, you know are doing a lot of work because they get to see your various bugs across the entire customer funnel uh, because more and more people are using it you get to hear more feedback so that i mean if you ask me that's a positive i don't look at it as a negative because uh, when people are hardly using it you don't get to hear too much of feedback so when people are using it is when you tend to hear feedback so there's a lot of feedback yeah. that's coming through from consumers and distributors that you know you know you know the you know the load the, you know it takes a long time to complete a transaction it is not three minutes it is not seamless it is very you know there's a lot of friction so yeah so you know had i've been talking about frictionless you know investment experience for the last three to four years very few people saw you know saw it uh, you know making sense but today people are coming back saying look you know I, why do you want why do you want a jpeg why can't you upload it in a pdf why do you want us to upload why can't you just pick it up from my from my from my from my from my gmail id or something like that so people are also thinking in, on those lines so there's a lot of work for product managers and 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 digital teams to do right now uh, but so clearly people are using it and aapko aapka jo criteria chahiye aapko usi criteria ke base pe hum log profile de sakte hain sir aapko So, uh, so you know, thanks, yeah. Ajit. Yeah, no, that's uh, definitely very uh, fascinating to hear. You know that there's a lot of two-way communication with uh, your channel partners and financial agents as well, and it's not just uh, 
you know, like a standstill because if you see the roads or the, you know, economy outside, it looks like everything is uh, at a pause. But internally, obviously, things are moving and people are working hard uh, to, you know, get things in order and keep the engine Absolutely. moving. Absolutely. So, like I said, it's going to be very different for different industries. Well, we have, we have, you know, mine is not a, a, a true representation of the entire economy. Uh, it's one small business where the industry is still functioning. We still have customer distributor engagement going on uh, because the stock market is functioning, right? So, uh, so we're in that spot today. Uh, so, a lot of this is very, very relevant as far as we're concerned. No, definitely. I think I'd put down some uh, content from the consumer side as well. <laughs> Uh, and I think which you've been talking about long-term goals. So do you want to? Yeah. So I think uh, this is really from a, from an investor point of view. Uh, uh, what we've also tried to do is to basically try and stay on the message that uh, you know these are these are times when uh, uh, you tend to feel you no. Know, so look, a lot of portfolios will be 30, 40 percent down, right? Uh, so oh. and while as an industry we have moved. They moved up from Feb to March. Now, is that going to be representative of how April is going to be? I don't know, right? Uh, but uh, if you ask me, uh, consumers need to be told, need more uh, education, need to be made aware that this too shall pass, right? Uh, uh, you know, whether, whether it happened in 2008, whether it happened in 2002. Like I said, this is it's very difficult to compare events across years. Right. This is an this is an event where a generation of investors who came into this industry over the last ten years would not have even you know fathomed. Right. So this is not something which we can just easily say it happened ten years ago, it happened twenty years ago. All we can say today is whether you make ten percent return or twelve percent return or thirteen percent return. Seven year SIPs are negative today. Let's not forget that. Right. So the long term concept is how long is long term will also come back. So I think one thing that we want to communicate is that you know keep your goals. And, and always ensure that you stick within your goals, right? So fitness, for example, is one area, right? That we all keep talking about. So if you are, you know, we all need to stay fit. So, you know, if you're locked down, too bad. You can still find a way to be fit at home. So it's very similar in our industry as well, in investment as well. So we're trying to tell people that keep your goals in mind and, and, and stay invested with your goals, right? So that's, that's the other, uh, uh, you know, the communication that we've tried to do. And this is the other form, right? Where there are there is a section of investors who look at this as the Amazon, uh, what uh, it's called the uh, fashion, what's that? The, the great Indian sale or whatever, right? So uh, the, you know uh, the, the stocks are actually on sale today. So you know uh, 60, uh, 50, 60 percent down. So these are times that you should be able to capture uh, 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 markets at these levels and and, and add to investment. So uh, that's why we said grab this opportunity. This is this this is pretty much once in a lifetime. So. So that's two, three different types of communication is what we've tried to focus on. Uh, which has worked, which has not worked. I think it's too early to say. Uh, but I think this, what we try to do is to address a cross-section of, uh, of consumers uh, with uh, this sort of communication. No, I said, no that's uh, very useful. I think uh, you know, communicating with uh, multiple stakeholders, including your IFAs and channel partners and the consumers, uh, making sure that those... Uh, Channels also not one-way channels, but two-way channels where you're listening to them, uh, hearing their concerns, and you know, uh, addressing uh, their biggest problem areas. I think that's uh, really good insight across industries, right? Like to listen to your yeah. customers closely than ever before. Uh, don't take them for granted because uh, they have many options uh, for their money and time in today's market. Definitely. I think we also have had uh, Ravish join in. Uh, hi, Ravish. Uh, Hi, hi, folks. How are you? Hi, Sunil. Hi, Vikas. And uh, good afternoon, Ajit. How are you? Hi, Ravish. Good to hear from you. How are you doing? Great to have you join us, Ravish. I think uh, you know we discussed a little bit on uh, scenario planning and communication with stakeholders. Uh, I do know right. you've also put together a few slides. Uh, would you want to share your screen or uh, to discuss yeah, a little bit just... from a legal perspective? We all, uh, you know, see brands and companies navigate these uh, times. Absolutely, absolutely. A, thank you for having us here. Uh, we would definitely would want to share uh, how we see as an ecosystem consumer sentiment uh, move in these very challenging times. Also, uh, you might see a little uh, interference in my presentation in terms of bandwidth, hence I'm not starting my video. So apologies in advance for that. I will just share my screen now.
Great. Can you see my screen? Yes, Alicia, it's clear. Fantastic. All right. So quick context for everyone who's on the webinar. Thank you for your time, folks. And once again, thank you, uh, Sunil and Vikas and Ajit uh, for uh, having us here. Uh, all of us are aware that these are extremely... I think getting sorry. Back to some reason, I think maybe... Uh, the screen? Can you see the screen now? I can see 90% on the right that's getting cut for some reason. Uh, do you want to present, Sunil? I have like, uh, just in case, because I am on full screen right now. Just one second, I'll open it out here. It is better now? So there's no presentation right now. Uh, shall I share it or I mean, so, yeah. yeah, you can go ahead and share it actually, Sunil. It will be much faster yeah, in sure. the interest of time for everyone. Thank you. All right, I can see your screen. I can see your screen now. If it's clear for everyone, we can proceed. Yes, I think it's clear now. Fantastic. Perfect. All right. So again, sorry for the interruption, folks. Uh, so quick recap. Uh, what we will uh, quickly go through uh, in the time today is to ensure that uh, we are able to throw lights on these four broad areas that firstly, uh, how the consumer behavior is moving uh, in these very difficult times. Uh, and it's some of the fastest uh, changes which even we in our lifetimes most of us would have seen so it's not now a monthly or a weekly change in consumer sentiments that we see it's almost something which is changing dramatically daily so what are those some learnings which we can share with everyone here beyond consumer how are businesses now assessing adapting and then obviously investing both in the short mid and long term uh, to deal with this uh, scenario uh, how are they managing their brands how are they participating together to overcome the challenges being faced with them and other brands? And then some of them are already thinking on the lines of pivoting to different strategies. What could be those? Last but not the least, how are businesses leading with respect? Because clearly this is not the time for opportunism. Uh, everyone, including consumers, expect the brands which they have trusted for years now to stand up and deliver. So how are brands doing that? Uh, on the light of what the consumers are expecting and businesses want to do, how are these two facets being put together? So how is this communication now being laid out by brands to the consumers? Lastly, we also have a quick section where we have seen some great examples of brands who are stepping up and then in various manners delivering uh, both to their customers and to society at large. So in terms of pure play, CSR activities, advertising, content, how are they actually executing it? So the aim would be to kind of throw light across all of these pillars. Uh, next slide, please. Great. So as we started that, we are already in the midst of a paradigm shift, uh, which is both in terms of consumer behavior, more importantly, a society at large. Uh, next slide, please. The key trends which we have as Google, and this is not pertinent only to India, we have seen this across countries, you know, across continents. Uh, there are four broad themes which have really uh, you know, come up and taken everyone's attention. Uh, obviously, most of these themes are not net new and many of you would already be identifying with them either in your personal lives or as a business. So obviously the non-contact revolution, uh, that that's something which is top and front and center of everything we do these days. Second is home is the new office. 
which is literally the situation and the scenario where we are in right now, as we speak, all of us are there. Uh, in terms of behavioral trends, stay at home entertainment per se is a huge, huge shift and opportunity uh, and an actual reality, which both consumers and businesses have seen alike. And lastly, and this is something which is almost a net new in terms of a section of society is the emergence of virtual communities. So how are actually these four key trends playing out is what we'll quickly go through in the next slides. Next slide, please. So obviously we are in a state of ensuring that we behave responsibility and responsibly and we remain within our houses. So needless to say footfalls and actual physical movement of people has drastically dropped across countries, uh, especially in India as well. We have seen the fact that this is being shown in the drop in footfalls across physical stores. What also has in turn led to is a straight up corresponding increase in online shopping. So e-commerce as a vertical has definitely seen a huge uptake, which has in turn led to some positive news of hiring as well. So as I said, we are going to focus across countries. Uh, one of our strong partners and one of the top brands, Amazon, is now actually going forward and ensuring that they are ramping up to meet this unpredictable opportunity of increasing workers, hiring workers. It's a little off from what we hear day to day in everyday life, but there are many brands who are now stepping up and actually ensuring that they cater for this. So one thing is for sure that online shopping, whether it's e-commerce or different other verticals, uh, which we come to later, they have definitely seen a boost uh, in these last four to six weeks. Home is the new office. Uh, work from home, needless to say, it's become uh, as, as, as popular as the 9 p.m. news. So there, there is no need to kind of delve deeper into that. What we have seen, and again, as we all of us are practicing already, that tech peripherals overall, where web conferencing apps are a subset of that, that's something as a category which has completely exploded. While that is one part of it, what I also would want to bring to everyone's attention, especially from a business point of view, brands are now adjusting to 24 seven cycles of consumers. So till now, every brand had a very strong idea and a cut of how their consumer behaves, uh, that uh, there is a morning drive time, there's an evening drive time. Uh, I am from a, a female TG led vertical. Mothers tend to get only active after 10 p.m. All these uh, diktats, all these ideal scenarios are now being broken. So that's something net new that because of this work from home phenomenon, A, people are adjusting their own routines. So we have seen that across podcasts, and we have seen that across content consumption. And lastly, the fact that there is no such predefined time band per se, where you can reach to your consumer. So we have seen some great examples, which we'll come to in some time, where brands are now trying to be present for their consumers across 24 seven. So that's again, something as an always on world where we have seen brands trying to reach out. Moving on. Uh, thanks. Thanks for that. Moving on. Stay at home entertain as the next slide falls is something again, which is an immediate go to because people obviously need to uh, detach from work while it is difficult. All of us are again, part of the phenomenon. The fact of the matter remains. And this is something which is extremely pleasantly surprising in this scenario. There was actually an increase in searches for the keyword YouTube in itself in the last seven days. While we all of us are digital marketeers and we understand how other keywords, product keywords, brand keywords are gaining significance. The fact of the matter remains while YouTube is one of the channels across whether it's the likes of the Zoom, Busy Hangout which you're on, or OTT players, there has been a definite and an obvious increase in consumption. So at least we do know that where our consumers are spending time. These are numbers from AC Nielsen, which, uh, which you know, which we can share later with you as well, that in some of the core buying TGs, which is 35 to 44, this was across male, female, uh, there was a double digit increase in the number of reach and the number of consumption. Similarly, video on demand users. So all the OTT players, the data they reported back, there was close to a hundred percent increase in terms of yours. So again, as brands, we 
can understand, we can try and leverage these opportunities of where we know our consumers are there with their full intent. Next slide, please. Emerging virtual communities. This is a phenomenon which uh, was extremely enriching for us as well. Uh, while we do know that because of the distancing measures which are proactively being taken by everyone, uh, people are by choice or not getting hooked onto the virtual world. Hence, interaction in this virtual world, virtual, active, virtual activities are growing at an astonishing rate. And this has led to the formation of a lot of virtual communities. Moving on. So while we do see obviously a huge spike in interest for virtual events, a classic example is something which many of you probably would already be doing is this fitness app called CultFit. Now CultFit, uh, and I am I'm a member of CultFit. I, I regularly used to visit the CultFit gyms as well, which are close to my house. They have done a fantastic business pivot to online live classes where they not only have gamified the entire gym experience where now while you are working out you are pitted against other members who are at the same time live in the classes you get class you get points on that so that that gives you a sense of competition at the same time it gives you a sense of community which you used to get in an actual physical class at the same time they have also then started putting in marquee uh, ambassadors to the likes of a Vijender Singh, uh, a Mandira Bedi, etc., whom they are now trying to position as that we are trying to solve for you as a consumer. We know you are unfortunately, but for the right reason, stuck at home. We will try and pivot our business to serve your needs best. And we have heard some really stellar feedback uh, from the client on this pivot of the business strategy. So the broader theme was virtual communities and virtual engagement will be the need of the hour, the days in the weeks ahead. So what can we leverage from there? Moving on, please. Lastly, as I said, what are businesses responding and how are they actually businesses catering to these trends? So we have some examples uh, right now in the next slide of some global brands who have actually used uh, four key strategies uh, uh, and most brands can and most businesses hopefully can identify in these four broad buckets towards the end of this uh, of this uh, sharing of information we'll also have examples of very classical indian brands but i just quickly wanted to take uh, everyone know that how the global brands because this phenomenon this situation was far more nuanced in other countries before it kind of manifested itself in india so we have seen that, for example, putting people first and mitigate the brand risk was one of the key strategies which companies were taking off, that they were ensuring that before taking care of the customer, they were taking care of the internal customer, which were their employees itself. So right now we have examples of Oracle and Mr. Porter, which is essentially a delivery brand. But we also see this we saw the same examples with the likes of a Zomato and a Swiggy, where they actually proactively called out that they are actually looking and ensuring that while their delivery folks were on the ground, they were proactively looking after them. So the contactless delivery was a, a, a pivot to ensure the sanctity of their end customers. But at the same time, they were taking care of the delivery boys. That's one of the great example of how brands are mitigating business risks by taking care of their people first. So mitigating business risks uh just give me a second please my screen went blank yep and then ensuring that you are participating in efforts together so how are you actually together as a team leveraging the industry expertise and taking care of your customers so for example a hotel chain uh, yeah i can give that example actually it was hilton hilton got to know that it might have to probably lay off because of these scenarios some of its staff it is now proactively working with other restaurants and other chains in that area to ensure that people who might not be Hilton might not be able to support in its workforce are getting jobs there. So participating in efforts in the industry expertise, making things easier for your people as well. 
leading innovation efforts, there's an entire array of examples which we'll come to, but Nike, as always being one of the most innovative brands globally, we have seen that they have, again, just like that, launched stay-at-home workout sessions. They have, they have a very great communication also going for that. Uh, I'm sure most of you would have heard of it. I identified with it a lot. And it, if I'm not wrong, it goes something to the tune of, if you ever wanted to play for millions, now is your turn. Do it inside your house. So from that perspective. And, but, and last, not but the least, leading response efforts. So ensuring that brands are now proactively pivoting on unknown scenarios. So for example, in India, COVID as a category was not covered in a lot of insurance uh, clients' uh, overall mandates. Many players, which we'll see examples later, have now stepped up and they are now including it. Similarly, brands which were educational brands, which were only physically you know, uh, discharging their entire courses have now pivoted to an online strategy. So the biggest challenge was the business model itself. And now they have completely moved on to that. So we'll see more examples of these, but uh, I'm happy to take on a question towards the end of this presentation on how individual brands can look at it. Last but not the least, while we have seen great trends, how are brands actually putting it together in terms of messaging? So for that, there were five key themes uh, which we saw across multiple brands and I tried to bring them together in simple, very crisp takeaways. Uh, so first and foremost, I think we can directly move to the slides. Uh, that will be far much easier. So next slide, please. As I said, be helpful as needs evolve. So for example, and these, many of these examples now are global brands because we have I mean, uh, honest approvals from them to use them. But from the perspective, helping customers with cancellation, refunds, ensuring that they are continuously posting updates at the time when you know your consumer is online. Healthcare brands now giving free deliveries on medications and ensuring that the prescriptions which you have are getting auto refilled. So we as businesses need to understand that the needs of our customers will evolve every week because this is a net new situation for our customer as well. And even the customer is not aware of what his next need might be. As their needs evolve, even we as businesses can try and be helpful. I think that that was one very strong takeaway which we saw uh, on this part. Moving on. Moving forward, again, from the same perspective on that, that how are brands helping? We have the examples of Hyundai and Ford, wherein they have now trying to help buyers who purchased vehicles from them in the last six months. Obviously, it will be a difficult time financially for everyone. Both these global giants are now ensuring that they are passing on benefits and even uh, schemes to their customers, very similar to what our government did now uh, from the perspective of EMIs with the help of RBI and various leading financial institutions. So that's a great example. I already touched briefly on this part which was to form forging new communities and connections. Multiple brands are now ensuring that they are helping people connect uh, virtually and reignite long lost affiliations, uh, connections, etc. Right now, most of it is virtual, but it's a tremendous opportunity for brands to leverage content marketing in the social world. So that's one strong way which brands can strongly leverage that the fact that you should leverage your YouTube channels, you should leverage other social mediums with which you can meaningfully connect and engage in this virtual world. So help in this creation of communities because as a consumer, never has been a consumer intent more stronger to virtually connect and engage with brands because that's what is the best available option which is available to us right now. So that's a huge, huge opportunity area for all businesses. Are just coming for 24 7 i can't uh, i can't call this out enough uh, most of us are juggling between professional and personal lives so much so that most of us would agree that we probably end up working more in a work from home environment so that clearly shows that work will spill over to a six seven eight nine pm and that basically means that things which you're earlier doing at six seven eight pm which was probably in my case my gym class I now do my gym class at seven o'clock in the morning. 
so i as a consumer now are am delivering intent i am available 24/7 the brands which aspire to engage with me even they need to kind of do so great examples of that in an offline format now are grocery stores for example even in india which are now adjusting their hours to ensure that they cater to different needs separately so great example of the fact that they are now doing it for senior citizens separately vis-a-vis -vis others so a fantastic i can't name the brand but fantastic call out to the way they have catered for their consumers let's move on this is this is uh, I, i wouldn't want to call this out as an opportunity this is something which we should genuinely all of us we should be doing and most of us are doing uh, again one of the great examples we have personally seen and i personally like is of zomato i'm sure most of you would have seen that uh, on on the zomato app the delivery boys when they are out for delivery uh, zomato has changed the icons for them to uh, zomato uh, delivery boys with capes so they are showing that your order is on the way but it's almost like that of a superman which is on the way to delivery so we need to ensure that the people who are in turn taking care of our customers are being you know rightfully so being looked upon as heroes and hence being called out as well so i think this is what the kind of brand communication which me as a consumer you know would really really expect from a brand that i truly love rather than being plain consumerism and trying to capitalize on this opportunity this is a great way to ensure that you are standing up for the ideals you have the ethos the culture which you have as a brand so this is a fantastic point which brands can again leverage next slide please and lastly uh, ensuring that we are ensuring new novel ways when we say novel ways uh, live streams uh, ensuring that you have content which is synced to different dgs ensuring that from the perspective that your themes which you are giving out to your consumer are relevant to where they are so for example a lot of host shows across the world are now being aired from that content creators bedroom itself so the late night show which was by one of the most famous live show talk show hosts is now being done by them so we also would need to pivot innovatively and i kept this point for last because i am already sure all brands all businesses all organizations are already thinking of that but if you are able to deliver on this this is again something which will kind of catch the eye of our consumers in the right tonality in the right setting moving on these are the broad buckets uh, and we can quickly skim through this uh, vikas and sunil because honestly speaking right now i would rather want to focus more on the uh, inspirational ideas as in said but again uh, quickly highlighted we completely understand that not all businesses are in the same bucket so if those who are severely impacted and whose bread and butter is on the line it's needless that you are looking at ensuring that you only look at your positive cash flow and you know ensuring that you can remain uh, and it existence as a business so there are certain products there are certain things which we can share with you and i think we can definitely come back and circle back towards the end of this uh, presentation if we have time uh, the next bucket being people who already are uh, facing drop in sales but they know that there is an opportunity so for example you might be a a, a retail brand a certain set of your skus are not relevant because people are not buying but you do know that in 3 months 6 months time a demand might come back how are you planning for that so again preparing for that recovery is again a critical aspect of how we are going to look at as a business uh the next business opportunity being in terms of pivoting to a different model we have already given examples of that but we have seen uh completely offline educational brands moving to an online first world uh brands moving from uh doorstep delivery to ensuring that they are tying in with other partners so there was a fantastic collaboration now say between a big basket and an uber which you would have all heard of where they are now tying up to ensure that their last mile delivery is there so big basket doesn't have that many delivery for example Well, they are pivoting so that's a great way to pivot your business model and ensure completion of your business goals and lastly businesses some of them who are facing a huge demand in india so 
we'll quickly kind of move to that slide. Uh, there are certain uh, aspects like, for example, as I said, virtual communities, gaming, which have seen an increase in demand. And uh, there are opportunities there as well that if you have know that you can reach out, how can you kind of build up on that? So there are various avenues to do that. We can again tackle them towards the end if required. So Neil, can we quickly move on to the inspiration? I know you have of time. Especially also, you know, one of our old clients, which used to take right. uh, offline uh, in schools. And, uh, you know, thanks to the Corona, mm -hmm. had to start taking uh, courses online. And they've seen a massive transformation. They have a waiting list now for their Wow. These for kids which are, you know, four to eight years old. So I think they would have never expected this. Obviously, consumer behaviors also have changed a lot. I think a lot of our, uh, you know, healthcare clients also, which were looking at doctor appointments offline, uh, a lot of them have now started looking at uh, online models. I think even at Social BP, had started DigiGrad, which is a digital training, uh, you know, initiative. And we were planning offline courses. Right. And we we're starting our next online right. course. So, I think lots of examples here of uh, businesses actually innovating. Uh, you know, I think to your earlier point, Ravi, of getting cash flow within 30 to 60 days so that you can keep the engine running constantly. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, great call out, Sunil. See, at the end of the day, we do realize the businesses are there across the spectrum. It has put businesses and a lot of them into a spot and probably forced them to innovate, which they probably would have done two or three years later. So mm -hmm. for some, I can probably use the term blessing in disguise, but at the same time, we cannot take away the fact that a lot of businesses are being hit where it hurts as well. So the aim is that how can we try and, you know, help as many businesses in as in a you know, limited manner or uh, help as possible. So hence, I mean, kudos to Social Week to kind of taking our time to get this webinar together and, you know, share examples because I think that's something we can do freely. And, you know, if we can buy any of the example, which we talk about or share in this forum, be able to inspire or give an idea to any business that, that I think would be truly a strong takeaway. So yeah. I think that's yeah, the example so, of uh, everything. You know, I think a lot of our retail clients and now earlier uh, e-commerce used to be a very small part of their uh, business, you know, usually under 10%. Right. I think, uh, you know, uh, as you mentioned, as a blessing in disguise, they are re-looking at their entire business model and supply chain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How yeah. 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 Business itself. Okay, so thanks, sir. Next. <laughs> so should we share some of the examples? We had some absolutely, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, to pick context again on the examples, we can move forward, Sunil. Uh, while all of this has been more around learnings and what we have seen uh, as a team uh, across uh, various clients that we work with, uh, this is a quick glossary. And I'm quite sure most of the folks in the audience would have seen this communication go out. But for quick context, we just wanted to quickly bring it and we'll quickly move through slides. I, I, we really don't need commentary here. I'm being very honest. It, it's really heartening to see how brands have now kind of pivoted their communication in the need of this hour. So right from travel, where we had Exigo, et cetera, OYO rooms, again, kind of coming to the fore and ensuring that, you know, they are offering their own hotels. And in fact, in US, they have opened up OYO rooms and OYO hotels for frontline workers of the entire healthcare community. They can come and stay there for free. Uh, Needless to say, the fact that all the travel brands are proactively reaching out and giving communication to ensure they are pertinent. This is what I called out the health insurance providers. Uh, you know, top brands are now coming to the fore and saying that do not worry, we will stand by you in this time of your need. So, I mean, you know, absolutely spot on great communication. Yeah, we can play this video. It's a nice video, this one. I'm so sick, Mr. Brown. I'm pretty sweet and brown. I can brighten up your day. Cause I'm so sorry. Hey, I'm so sick, Mr. Brown. Heading up to town. You can hang me all the way. So, yeah, fantastic work done. I'm sure a lot of you guys would have seen this. Uh, 
I don't think it, if I'm not wrong, I, like quick question and some of you could correct me. This video was actually being played in the normal mode. It was aggressively being promoted across television, not less than three weeks back. So three to four weeks back, this was an actual Kia commercial, which they were promoting on television with a normal way. And now they actually took that onus on them to actually play it in the rewind and kind of call out. So great, great work done by a brand. So, uh, also an can. example of uh, reusing your existing content, right? So I think we had also put down up examples of brands leveraging uh, how do you create content as well. So one, obviously the easiest way is to right. reuse the content you have and repurpose it. Uh, I think we also see a lot of uh, influencer marketing take off in this space uh, where you know, co uh, content creators can create those videos or blogs from the company. I think that's also really taking off uh, which brands should explore at this point of time. Absolutely, absolutely. I think content marketing is, is, is a huge, huge opportunity. Content social definitely to kind of leverage this uh, opportunity for brands to stand up. Like yeah. the, the core aim again of all this entire seminar is we should not try to leverage this moment in time. I, I personally don't think that is the right way to approach it. It's a leverage for us brands, for the culture, for the brand values that you stand. It's a huge opportunity for us to kind of stand up to that. So yeah, that's that great example. So you can take uh, the, like, the next slides. Yeah, absolutely. I think straight up. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so Geo Cinema. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Friends, such an iconic, and a lot of brands are doing that, whether it's uh, this, we have probably seen the McDonald's example. The McDonald's, they have like kind of moved away their iconic arches in their logo. So they have moved that away. So yeah, absolutely. So these are some of the examples. We can skim through that, Sunil. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And I'm assuming most of the I think Amul obviously has been doing a lot. Uh, I think uh, across, even for the Patti lights off, they have done some very nice creative. Absolutely, absolutely. So big brands are doing that. And again, the aim is from the perspective of topical content and raising awareness, not sales. So that is that is something which, which is critical that brands need to leverage. And uh, absolutely. So, so TikTok, there you go. So that's the Detol TikTok challenge which they kind of uh, posed across. Uh, so I, think, I think we take a few questions, uh, yep. Ravish and Ajit, in the absolutely. interest of time. You know, uh, I think we have absolutely, two absolutely. other topics. Yeah, I think uh, one question uh, we have also been seeing, uh, yeah, I think paid marketing, obviously, a lot of brands have paused at this time as well, uh, given the lockdown. But absolutely. I'm not seeing more, absolutely. Uh, you know, organic and SEO and content marketing. Is that a uh, suggestion you would give to brands to look at it more actively at this point to lower the cost of acquisition? Uh, Ajit and Ravish, both. And then we can open it up to a normal. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, so I, I think so. I think uh, these are times where, uh, you know, you need to have a, a, a tab on, on, on your spends clearly. So I think, uh, uh, and at the same time, you need to engage. Like, uh, you know, I think Ravish's presentation is very useful in, in looking at various uh, models of communication and engagement. Uh, so I think this is the time where people will spend a lot more time and energy on on on, on content oriented marketing and communication and engagement vis-a-vis -vis, uh, customer acquisition oriented uh, marketing spends. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Plus one to what uh, Ajit is saying because uh, all paid media has a return on investment, and if you can't accurately to a certain degree predict that as of now because these are uncertain times and uncertain consumer behavior, it it just might be a challenge. So I think from the perspective that right now, instead of investing in paid media, I said, I think you should invest as a brand first on, on your core values and whether you are trying to reach out to your consumer in the right moment in time or not. I think sales can probably come later. If you are in that four scenarios buckets, great. But I personally am of the opinion that I think right now, most businesses first need to solve for themselves 
their employees, and of course their customers. So it's it's a strong mix which you know they need to kind of cater for. But definitely social and content uh, are definitely two levers, uh, you know, which obviously can be of immediate use. <clears throat> right. No, absolutely. I think we started getting a few questions online. Please feel free to uh, turn on your video one at a time and uh, call out the question as well. I think uh, one question was from. Uh, are you there, Pradeep? Uh, Yes, I'm here. I'm here. You got right. a question? Yeah, so uh, I, I come from an FMCG background and uh, uh, specifically from a new product development and innovation background. I uh, just wanted to understand, okay. I, I have been following a couple of companies who have uh, uh, launched a new, a new products, but in the hygiene category. But there are, are there any uh, other categories that are launching new products? Just, uh, just curious about this. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I can I can take it for Ravi. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, so Pradeep. So like I said, right? Uh, again, I don't know about FMCG, but look, I I, I look at financial services as close as possible. It's uh, to FMCG, right? I don't think it's very far away from an FMCG category. Uh, mutual funds are actually launching new products. Uh, there's a competitor of mine that uh, that has a, a new product right up next week. Uh, so it really depends on the kind of model you're building out, and it depends on where your consumers are. Uh, so, and, and this is a fairly aggressive brand that's, uh, that's launching a, a new product next week. Uh, and I think it will be a success. So it, re and I, I've also heard of two, three similar, uh, brands launching new, 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 new funds in my business. Uh, so it really depends what, what you're trying to do. Swiggy, for example, right. I think they have launched, uh, groceries as a category in, in Chennai, at least I've, I've seen that, uh, it's a new line of business that they're launching clearly. And I see no reason why they will not want to continue that, that line. Uh, 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 so I, it's, uh, it's not it's not a time where people will not want to launch new products. Um, it really depends on which bucket you are in, right? Uh, are you in a bucket where there are consumers available? Is there a channel that you can actually communicate and fulfill with those consumers? And uh, you know, is, what's the kind of economics behind a, a product launch in this in this sort of a scenario, right? So I don't think this. It's a, it's a model where you cannot have new launches. You can have new launches, but it really depends on where you are right now. I think actually it's a great time uh -huh. to test as well. I think we were talking to a paneer brand, for example, flavored paneer brand, looking to come out with new flavors uh, during the season because actually uh, food and uh, you know luxury food products, the consumption has uh, gone up over the last uh, 10 to 12 days because more people are at home. They want to build their immunity. They want to eat good food. Uh, so, you know, a lot of brands are seeing traction increase. So if you need to see the relevance and whether that product is a good fit. For example, launching a new shoe at this point may not uh, add like a lot of value unless it's like a at home uh, footwear category. Uh, so it uh, was mentioning yeah, it just depend on the category. Yeah, Ravish. Yeah, fantastic examples. I mean, across with Ajit and Sunil, and I mean, uh, just to come back to the original question, while I honestly cannot comment on other brands launching FMCG products, but yes, for example, the obvious ones, which is in the personal care range, uh, especially sanitization and health safety, that obviously you would be seeing the roster of brands kind of launching that. Beyond FMCG as well, I think because FMCG has, and since you are from that background, uh, you would know uh, there's also this entire supply chain uh, where they need to kind of cater for. And right now, supply chain and getting SKUs across is a massive, massive challenge for most FMCG brands. So if that piece is sorted and if the demand is there, definitely FMCG brands are the first. In fact, they have the muscle to be able to launch. Uh, what I have definitely seen as Ajit was calling out in his vertical, for example, as I said, people spending a lot of time online. We work with a lot of gaming brands now. So they, you till now were very, very uh, pivoted on sports and fantasy games. But clearly because of say the cancellation of sporting tournaments, et cetera, et cetera, thoda pe sentiment dip hua hai. how they are catering for that is now by launching community games. Believe you me, like Housey, Ludo, Tambola. So now brands are pivoting and these are not five, I know, double digit brands and I'm not in luxury of revealing names, which in the last 15 days at breakneck speeds 
are trying to launch these forms of engagement because they know people are online people have time and people want to engage if they can engage within a community even better hence the house party app so that's where we are seeing trends of businesses leveraging opportunity so even my client who was one of the major clients in the gaming industry in india co focus was only the sports fantasy game however they saw this opportunity and they kind of pivoted to it so i think there are definite opportunities but as a business obviously and the business uh, board would be mature enough the consumer appetite and the delivery from a brand to reach them should be available so yeah so the two things which i would strongly recommend keeping in mind thanks radeep i hope that was uh, useful uh, swami nathan are you there uh... Swami so, Nathan mean, had a very interesting question. We'll come back to it when he's available. Okay. I think Satvik, uh, are you there? Satvik Shetty. I think I can see him. You can see me. Hey, yeah, Swami so, Nathan, uh, you could go first. I think you had asked the question on uh, cost per click and uh, CPMs. Are they coming down with reduced competition? <laughs> uh, okay. i am strongly assuming that question probably is aimed at me uh, however jit like if you want to take that one first as well i'll be happy to kind of let you take the lead on it i think the question was like uh, in these reduced times as media spends are coming down are people uh, right. seeing lower cpms and cost per clicks uh, to be very honest the only way to answer that question would be by vertical and, and uh, uh, again it, it's completely dependent and even at vertical as a general sense uh some query trends are coming down and as some obviously are picking up so it's it's a foregone conclusion that for example in a certain category which used to ensure a lot of physical footfalls the queries for that you would assume would have come down and hence so it's it's a straightforward math i cannot uh, honestly answer that as a generic statement for a particular category uh, the good thing is uh, we have social beat as one of our partners so if you have a pertinent category level query i can come back to you with data on that but off the cuff i wouldn't be able to but yes overall as a sentiment we have seen in certain sectors and that's a given fact you know query volumes have reduced uh, but then that does not mean that the consumer is not online he is just searching and engaging somewhere else in fact this is a fun fact and most of you would probably agree to it our screen times screen times essentially are the amount of time we spend uh, connected to our devices uh, whether it's your laptop ipad or tablet or mobile phone that has gone up in double digits so like in percentage points so clearly consumers are spending time online probably they are just engaging with different things now visibly two to four weeks back as as businesses as clients that's what i think if we can figure out where are the clients are our customers spending time that that should be our core goal yeah uh, i think another question was on b2b leads uh, okay what, what was the question sorry second uh, i think it was uh, ha has there been a drop in b2b leads over the last uh, few weeks after the lockdown uh ajit you want to take that first yeah so again it uh, it, it really depends industry to industry right so very difficult to generalize uh, uh, for, uh we haven't seen a drop in leads uh, uh we continue to see uh, very similar uh leads to what we had uh, four five weeks ago um we continue in the your play digital 100% straight to digital platforms uh, we continue to see very very similar volume to what we saw 5 uh, 6 weeks ago i would be tempted to say that it's gone up marginally uh, but again that's on specific days so it's uh, so i i don't we've not seen any erosion in that sense we've not seen a reduction in uh, lead numbers or reduction in conversion numbers we've actually seen very very similar numbers to what we saw 4 to 6 weeks ago so again it's uh, it's very very uh, industry depend uh, uh, specific you can't generalize 
uh, like i said we always need to look at it from a perspective that my industry is an industry which is continuing to function it's not uh, it's something very similar to groceries and uh, it comes in the essential services for whatever reason uh, uh, but it does so you know we continue to function in that yeah. sense definitely yeah i think uh, radhika are you there uh, yeah moving on you had a question on uh, textile and fashion export houses uh, yeah that's right if you want to ask that uh, please yeah because textile and fashion export houses are working on like one or two years ahead of the design uh, the product launch so and the and the returns from the business is only after two years or more so how can we combat the situation and make the most of it in the present scenario as in you have discussed very generic topics and the business models followed by big brands but then could you suggest something specifically for this industry right uh so we please just please repeat that question so i think the question uh, thanks adhika i think the question was you know there are certain industries like fashion or textile uh, when i guess you know like putting up plants for example you're going to plan that uh, 12 to 24 months before you know you see your product so your design everything you're planning like with a uh, big lag so uh, responsiveness for those sectors is very limited right you can't really change your right. supply chain so what should you do in Correct. such you know, was the question you know Which would come in your severely impacted category from your presentation. Like absolutely, absolutely, and I think, I mean, exactly. And I think you stole the words out of my mouth. Uh, I think cash flow operations, and now my questions would have been from the perspective to Radhika that how are you eventually planning to set up your business? Are you funded? Is it completely on your own? Are you a self-made entrepreneur? Because at the end of the day, in the long run, we need to ensure that the business sanctity. because as if now uh, and then more important if you are setting up your business are you exporting it to a certain country outside india because the business is now hinging on multiple other factors and many of these factors could be outside what me you and others know right now so i think right now probably would be a word of caution to understand where things are headed right now because if anyone was to answer that we can't answer what's going to happen even in Seven days time, etc. So, in my opinion, for such long-term decisions, probably taking a heed of caution and understanding the macro environment. Forget the micro. I think that would be critical to move forward. But that's in my opinion, and I have no experience in launching B two B textile houses. So, I'll be very honest about that. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, let me. I just. Uh... Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think uh, uh, I would echo what Ravi said. Uh, I don't have experience in textiles either. But then, having said that, uh, I think my only, uh, you know, piece of advice to anyone who's setting shop today from scratch is look at your business model and see the kind of dependencies and variables that you have in your life, right? Uh, and if there are variables that you don't yeah. know and you're not aware of today, I would just say keep that decision on hold because uh, we, you know, the best thing to do is to right now. Manage a set of variables that are actually manageable and visible. Because beyond that, uh, a lot of things are changing very fast, right? So the first thing is that if you look at, if you want to look at as a, a, a as as a category. Uh, hello, I don't know if I've dropped off. Am I am I audible? Yeah, it is audible. Yep. Yes. Sir. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, ex- export itself as a, as a as a category, right? As a, as a, as a business model. Uh, clearly, you need to look at which countries you're going to export to, and you need to see how those countries are geared up because you're you are you are getting into a recessionary environment across the globe, no doubt about it. Uh, now, how deep the recession is will be in specific geographies uh, and for specific periods of time. It could be anywhere between six to three three years, six months to three years. uh it depends on which country you're exporting to so i would say decisions like that it's best you put pen to paper and you wait you wait it out uh, and uh, you know look at it from uh, you know 3 months from now and you probably get a better sense now yeah, i think uh, thanks ajit i think uh, you know uh, as ravish and ajit said we, uh, none of us on the panel <coughs> are experts in the textile or fashion 
But what we are seeing, you know, as a digital agency working with many startups across sectors, which are massively hit, like we are working with sectors in local transport, uh, in fintech, with uh, lending to NBFCs, uh, e-commerce companies selling uh, non-essential products. I think the question uh, really, there might be how do we survive the next like nine to twelve months and come out next April stronger than we are in terms of our business processes, our business model, and our unit economics. So right now, I think it's not like a model where you can make any uh, like short-term changes, but the focus should be like, can I survive for the next nine to 12 months in terms of cash? Uh, uh, that would mean even taking loans, for example, uh, reducing your fixed costs uh, significantly. I think SIDB has also come out with a loan for startups uh, for two crores at a nominal interest rate. So finding new avenues for your working capital, uh, you know, to survive the next 12 months so that you can come back uh, stronger after that. I think that's what uh, most businesses are looking at at this point in time. I think Ajit's business uh, fortunately has a steady cash flow, but that's, uh, you know, I think a lot of businesses obviously uh, live on that month's revenue to a large extent in India. And I think that's where we are seeing a lot of pressure on cash flow uh, and working capital. I don't know if that helps uh, Radhika, but <clears throat> I think moving on, I think Vishant, uh, you had a very good question. Are you there? Vishant Pradeep. I think Vishant's question was uh, how are brands positioning their creative yeah. copy? Yes, Anil, I'm here. Yeah. I'm Please here. go ahead, you can ask your question. Yeah, so I just wanted to understand how, uh, because of this <laughs> uh, sensitive time, how brands are positioning their creative copy because um, can I give you an example? So let's say um, uh, for, let's say you are into, uh, you're selling uh, internet services, you're, a, you're an ISP. Having, having a copy like, you know, working from home without Wi-Fi is okay, right? Or, you know, let's say you're into the, uh, you're, you're into toys and um, you're having something like, you know, keeping the kids entertained uh, this summer or something like that. But uh, let's say, uh, I just wanted to know how I, I, it should not be opportunistic, right? Uh, it cannot be something like having your favorite coffee working from home. So that's one of the challenges I guess brands are facing because they don't want to, you know, touch or hurt any sentiment, right? So I just wanted to uh, get your views on that. I think you want to take that first. No, I think I'll, I'll, I'll take that, right? So I think this is also linked to a question which Swaminathan has, has, has asked in terms of, well, let me just repeat that question so we, I can answer both questions together. He's yeah. talking about can financial brands like fixed investment and insurance schemes be opportunistic at this time? For example, a fixed deposit scheme could utilize the fall in stock markets to protect themselves as a safer alternative. Uh, right? So, uh, so Ishan and, and Swaminathan, so I think very similar uh, context to your question. I'm completely aligned with both your thought processes. I don't think brands should do that. Uh, in fact, I do know people who, who who come up with proposals to me on 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 COVID pack and COVID proposals and in times of COVID and all of that. So I think uh, you know we've got to be very sensitive to uh, the kind of copy and the kind of creative that we use to engage with customers. Uh, these are times where you should be very very uh, clear to not be opportunistic. And, and use this particular moment to acquire a new customer. I think that's the last thing we should do, except I think insurance, right? Because insurance, you need to add COVID as a, as a, as a, as an illness or whatever, right? So COVID cover insurance, which I think that's probably the only category that I can think of, or, you know, even sanitizers, I don't, you know, because of the current environment, you're looking at it from that point of view, but I believe this is not the time to be opportunistic and our communication should ensure that we, we still continue to talk about the benefits, the value propositions of the product and try and engage the customer at that level without getting into the, you know, this is the time for you to do it. This is the time for you to buy this product. This is the time for you. Should be, I, I think you should stay away from all of that because brands which will be remembered are, by, are brands which will actually talk, continue to sell the value proposition to the customer and not be opportunistic. Uh, the temptation is always there and there are brands doing it, but I don't agree with those brands. And I, I think those sort of brands will be remembered for the wrong things uh, over, over the next five to 10 years. Uh, brands that continue to stick to their core, core value proposition and talk about ease. So for example, digital as a channel, 
is not being opportunistic right it is a channel through which you can actually get ease of transaction for example in my industry or in e-commerce for example right uh, so i think like what google is trying to talk about right if you look at ravish's presentation his presentation was not opportunistic he talked about a shift in consumer behavior a shift in consumer behavior is not something which is opportunistic shift in consumer behavior is very different so you know if i can gamify content in a, in a complex industry like financial services it is not it's not being opportunistic but if i were to say you know here is a covid protected investment portfolio for you that's being you know insanely opportunistic i think those sort of those that sort of communication should not be there uh, so we should stick to very simple value propositions uh, and, and and communicate very very uh, uh, simple communication content to, to consumers okay i don't think we should have that hint of urgency right which calls out um, let's say stock up now or limited no, stocks would that would that be very opportunistic no again there you are you are actually trying to work on the anxiety element or the panic element of the customer see today yeah. find me one person in the world who's not anxious find me one person yeah. in this in this world who's not who's not you know who's not having some sort of panic element to him Every, all of us are so yeah. businesses yeah. should be very very sensitive to it businesses should be very very cognizant of the kind of content that goes out right it is this is not the right time to sell this is the right time to engage and if engagement leads to sales good for you but this is not the right time to go and ask a customer to say look come and buy me because i am the right person for you at this time that's absolute nonsense it's probably only insurance that can do that none no other category in my view should be able to do that so we had a lot of brands you know since i work in amazon i am in display ads uh, we had a lot of brands coming out with a um, lot of creative copies which can be very subjective so even you know we were rejecting them because of this so i just wanted you know a point of view as to how you know brands uh, the creative copies you know it should not be very opportunistic or you know that I, one of the I, I would i would i would think so i mean sunil and uh, ravish are probably better equipped to answer that because both of them come from a slightly different perspective on uh, on on creative because they work on creative uh, i look at it more from a from a from a from a marketing and a and a management point of view Uh, uh, as businesses, we shouldn't be opportunistic in times like these. Yes, I think probably you know. Uh, uh, I think communicating that you know your your business is not only about your revenues and growth, but about the. So I've just shared the screen with the Volvo example. For example, you know, always Volvo yeah. has the thing that uh, they are the safest place yeah. to go on the road. And I think Correct. actually by iterating like this, it even further strengthens Volvo as a safe place to be in normal times. But I think this communication really helps you. Fantastic. Uh, thanks, thanks, Ajit. Also, thanks. there are brands like uh, which are using humor as well. I think you know, depending on your target audience and how you're communicating it, not opportunistically. So this creative by a mobile app, for example, you know, which is for small business owners, it does not really want. promote the usage of the product but it's a way for you know the business owner who is sitting at home uh, and you know stressed about stressed out to just uh, have a smile on his face so i think if you're doing content it can bring a smile on your consumer's face uh, without promoting your product i think that's very important that it's not opportunistic but you're trying to connect with them and you know build a sense of bonding i think that's still uh, quite uh, fair ravi shona say something there no oh, absolutely on point i think i called it out earlier as well uh, like this this moment in time is not for selling at all i think for brands it's about standing for what they aspire to be so that is the communication and the volvo ad was spot on i think there is certain expectation as well from long term loyalists so for example i might be a loyalist of nike as a brand for whatever sets of reasons i also have a certain set of expectations and it will probably lead to a negative connotation in my mind if i see nike trying a hard sell communication strategy so definitely what what ajit said it's a very strong opportunity for us to engage on the brand ethos fantastic if it leads to sales great but to make a killing to put it in that manner in this environment will only be a short term win again this is strictly my opinion but we see a lot of brands hinging on the caution side of it as well so we saw examples across the board we have seen a dip in media advertising per se say in a lot of sectors there is a reason for that most brands are actually now adopting this wait and watch and put out the right communication 
strategy. So that is very heartening to see. Absolutely. I think we have a few more examples as well. I think we'll take a few questions and then share it. Uh, Namita, are you there? Uh... Yes. Hi. Hi, this is Namita. Yes. Please go ahead. So, uh, so my question was, uh, you know, uh, I know insurance is the most uh, want thing. Like it's it's really something that people are uh, trying to understand the risk properly. And zero point seven percent penetration in India has suddenly become twenty percent, two percent, and uh, people are starting starting to uh, you know know the realization in terms of how how insurance is required. But you know, we don't want to basically drive our communication only to COVID. We want even later on people. Should realize the importance of insurance and then take a policy because right now taking a policy will be very short term because people are panicked people are people are under a lot of anxiety and then they are buying insurance policy yeah. so is there any i mean i i don't want to basically be a little opportunistic at this time this point of time but can we can we leverage on uh, our uh, usps like possibly for uh, for some people, for some insurance company claims would be uh, much easier than other companies so can we can we talk about certain experiences of people who had covid and were quarantined for uh, for a couple of uh, weeks and then they basically uh, reached out to us for claims uh, how their experience was uh, I just need to know how should we basically focus on that part of communication no, very interesting, Namita. Absolutely. Ajay, you want to take that close to? Uh... Yeah, so, so, Namita, so I, uh, so I think uh, uh, you know, there are two things, two traits that you look at before selling a financial services product. Okay. Yeah. It's greed and fear. Okay. Uh, I've always believed that uh, the investment industry needs to look at greed and the insurance industry needs to need to look at fear. Okay. okay so, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong in being, as I said, opportunistic in insurance is probably the only exception I have. Uh, because, yeah. uh, 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 you know, in times of greed, you, people want to talk about mutual funds and investments because you are greedy for more and more money, right? Whether it works or not. Whereas in times of fear, you want to go and ensure that you can sell something which will take care of your fear. So insurance is always sold on fear in that sense, right? And, and India continues to be an extremely underpenetrated, underinsured market. And it will continue to be an underinsured market even in the post-COVID world, uh, right? So there's nothing wrong in, in in being reasonably opportunistic during these this particular period because this I mean you go back to the days of demonetization when a ton mm -hmm. of wallet companies promoted their prepaid their, their own wallets during demonetization. There's absolutely nothing wrong. You will have that moment uh, in your in in your industry in your career in your life where you can afford to be opportunistic because it is not being negative. It is, mm -hmm. it is, you know, this is an environment where you need to ensure that people COVID proof themselves. You need mm -hmm. to try and communicate that health insurance in particular is very, very important because as medical costs escalate, as you know, as whatever, et cetera, et cetera, you know, mm -hmm. you all of us need a reasonably, you know, sensible health cover, right? There's absolutely mm -hmm. nothing wrong. And, and this is a time in your moment uh, in, in your life where you should communicate that. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, right? Uh, 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 but like you said, this should continue in the post-COVID world as well, right? Uh, absolutely. So I think, uh, you know, examples of, of claims, see, my only challenge with things like claims, right? I think it's, you, know, you go talk to a customer who doesn't understand insurance and then you talk about claims, he's not going to understand it, right? So I think the, the benefit of, of talking about fear and saying, look, if you don't have this, you're going to run up a bill of so much. And if you don't have this policy, you can become poor. If you're rich today, you can become poor if you don't have a health insurance policy, right? I think that communication is, 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 is fantastic to a customer, right? There's nothing wrong with it because that is the truth. Your product is sold on fear, right? Nobody wants to use of health insurance. All of us want to have a health insurance policy, but we hope we don't want to use a health insurance policy, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, and using, uh, you know, things like, um, um, you know, uh, uh, reviews or, or if you want to use, uh, you know, a, a customer who's gone through a COVID experience and how your particular company's uh, claim claim cycle or, or, or TAT for claim was much faster than A, B, C or D. There's nothing wrong with, it. Uh, you know, those are all useful ways to build content engagement with customers. But I don't believe 
that uh, like the pre previous question on opportunistic for other categories i think this is one category that can afford to be opportunistic within the realm of sensibility right uh, it shouldn't be outlandish but within that spectrum uh, you can afford to be opportunistic and this is your moment you have to build up so sure. think like uh, ajay you're saying that uh, the, uh, covid the uh, patient like testimonial and that claim experience would be a positive uh, communication for yeah but that, that's not today that's in the future right i think today yeah, for example uh, for example today what is the biggest fear of a covid patient his biggest fear of covid is not whether he can fund a bill or not his hmm. biggest fear is whether he'll survive or not survive so, yeah. so i think uh, the idea of covid orient covid language health insurance is 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 really in the realm of opportunism uh, is trying to get customer look uh, covid is also covered in my health policy that's all right but using covid to show that my my claim stat was is much faster than abc or d can happen sometime later but today you should use covid as an example to capture the customer so that he's covered that's about it right uh, but i won't go beyond that today because the biggest fear for a covid customer is not is really not health insurance because when I mean, mm-hmm. what little there also the, the government has now come in supreme court now says don't charge for uh, testing right so you know mm-hmm. today we are, we are going to live in a very socialistic environment as far as covid is concerned at least for the next 3 to 8 weeks right mm-hmm. so if this is done you can talk about a covid you know care at a, at a at xyz hospital cost you 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs ventilator cost you 3 lakhs a day so you need to have health insurance but uh, mm-hmm. today i think just talk about how this your, your policy is also covered in covid there's nothing wrong with it mm mm-hmm. also okay. i just wanted to share a experience from icic lombard i think we've been working with them on a positive communication campaign So I think we are going more with the positive route because there's mm-hmm. obviously a lot of forwards which are negative and uh, you know stress causing. So I think the you know communication uh, where you take a more positive line also is appreciated by people. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it depends. Like I said, I mean I strongly believe in greed and fear in financial services. So, <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, fear both and both are not negative traits. Uh, all of us are greedy when it comes we need to be all of us are fearful when we need to be so. absolutely well thank you thank you so much for your insight thank i you. think we are uh, pretty much uh, done with the time uh, slot if we have one last question we could uh, take it i think uh, manjula dave is there or? i think her question was on startups uh, and you know how the impact, impact is on startups in particular I did you been at a startup earlier at Bank Bazaar, and I think you had touched a lot of startups. So, so yeah, so so Manjula startups. You know, the only thing, only good thing. I don't know if you are a part of a startup or not, but this pandemic scenario is not impacting just startups. It impacts even uh, you know very well established brands, fifty, uh, sixty year old brands as well. So yeah, so there will be an impact. I think startups. Uh, the reason why startups will also be in greater impact is because yeah. only from a unit economics cash flow point of view. Uh, uh, so again uh, this is very similar to i think uh, the lady who asked the question on uh, textile export right so these are tough times for startups uh, uh, you know simple advice keep your costs uh, at check ensure that you avoid unnecessary costs and you know try and see if you can be as lean as possible in terms of resourcing uh, all of you know those sort of things uh, and uh, and then see how best your 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 revenue line can actually grow over time right with with keeping costs flat I think that's really the answer. Uh, this is not the time for uh, you know additional rounds of funding, etc., etc. Unless you're a big basket and those sort of models, right? Where uh, you know there is a, a, a desperate need to scale up to meet demand, and hence you know you can go and look for a line. But uh, at this point in time, uh, if you're whether you're a fintech or or a consumer tech uh, play, uh, it's a time to wait and watch. Uh, uh, these are definitely worrying times for startups. Uh, but i i you know i i still believe i'm not i'm not an a pessimist beyond a point uh, i genuinely believe this will this will pass you know whether it's 3 months 6 months 8 months can be debated but i think uh, startups have created such a massive impact in our economy and as far as job creation is concerned that uh, they'll be back with a bang 
so if any if anyone is 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 uh, you know of the impression that the startup world is dead and you know the new normal post covid is uh, only well established companies with with large capitals and good cash flow will survive all that is all very good uh, but don't write off startups uh, uh, you know they will be they will definitely survive a startup may crash b startup will survive we don't know all of that so it depends uh, which you know who's where in what position right uh, 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 but the startup story is not over it's very much there uh, i and I, i believe uh, it will it will definitely uh, accelerate over time and there will be startups which will benefit out of this scenario right uh, and those startups will definitely you know uh, grow much faster so i i, I don't you know I, so i don't think you should write off startups in general it will impact like how it impacts other businesses Definitely, yeah. uh, Ravish, do you want to add over there quickly uh, before we end? With well, absolutely, I think that's what uh, I think it's a from the startup ecosystem point of view, and all the big uh, uh, players <coughs> who actually the houses, the likes of Sequoia, etc. Even we have had inputs from them. I think they all have at least a nine-month window where they are going to closely observe because they are not only looking at India-based scenarios; they also have to ensure that uh, where their eventual demands globally are kind of. Uh, travesting so from what we understand 6 to 9 months would be a wait and watch across most verticals whether it's fintech medtech gaming is slightly different health tech education so all of these verticals which were kind of the main uh, forts where a lot of investor and uh, a lot of uh, startup money was being deployed i think for the next 6 to 9 months is a wait and watch however that's the word it is wait and watch so we still have to see brand vidya saying that they will shut shop no that as ajit said that's not as of now a scenario even which to which we have uh, exposure to so most brands have just as i said probably just reduced the uh, super velocity at which they were growing so they were so for example most of the startup ecosystem was outgrowing the general indian market growth rate by 3x 4x 5x times probably that is not happening that right now but that doesn't mean that it's a cause for concern they are just waiting and watching so they will definitely be back with a bang no no worries right. about that <clears throat> no absolutely i think uh, let me you know in the interest of time quickly uh, summarize the key takeaways i think there are a few more questions which uh, i take the liberty maybe if you know participants can connect with us on linkedin or drop an email to social beats twitter handle and we can answer that offline you can see some questions absolutely questions. a few other folks as well so just to summarize you know i think uh, best brand that uh, this as a opportunity to further strengthen their brand uh, which means you know to your consumers and stakeholders with empathy uh, and not opportunistically as ajit and ravi sir pointed out also at the same time uh, staying relevant in the conversation and not disappearing right so even though your uh, media spends or marketing might come down this is not a great time for your brand to just disappear of the face of earth i think that important to keep that communication alive uh, reduce anxiety and let your customers know that you're there for them i think even in the mutual fund space for example i think amfi has come out with a lower uh, you know it Sunil, can we tell out? I think there's some connection issues here, so I think uh, we'll probably yeah, unable to do it. I'll probably yeah. uh, I can hear. Yeah, yeah. I think those are some of the key takeaways. I think there is a lot that we need to think about overall, and I think uh, the best way is to actually see how to adapt to the situation and sort of continue the conversation with customers wherever you can. Uh, and then see how you can maximize once the lockdown is actually lifted. Uh, so with that, I think uh, thanks so much, Ajit and Ravish and Sunil as well for for hosting this. And uh, I think Sunil is back. We want to find him. Yeah. Sunil. Uh, thank you so much. And I think we'll take the questions on Twitter or please do connect with us on LinkedIn. Really appreciate. Right. Thanks. thanks, Sunil. Thanks, Ravish. All right. Thank you, Ajit and Ravish. Thanks, Ajit. Thank thanks, Sunil and Vikas. Cheers. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.